Hey, I'm Zella Sage Plays. Welcome to Drax Menagerie. Now that is an impressive start to a zoo. The details are absolutely insane. Just look at these statues. Drac is famous for his statues. There's a few of them on the workshop. And the things he does with just the, the pieces in this game are absolutely amazing. We are looking at a classic zoo here. This is a recreation of the Tierpark Hagenbeck in Germany, which is one of the, well in fact no, it was the first zoo to display animals in natural looking surroundings. Uh, they were definitely not natural surroundings, but compared to the cages that all the animals had been in beforehand, it was pretty impressive for the time. And this zoo is equally as impressive. It's not completely based on the Hagenbeck Zoo. Um, there's lots of other influences here as well. This is the entrance plaza, and it is just full of the details that you'd expect from Drac, who I've mentioned many times on my channel that he is one of my favorite creators and incredibly knowledgeable about zoo history. Talked to him a lot about various uh, aspects of zoos. Very useful man to know. Look at these tables. Tables and chairs are crazy. We've got all sorts of things in this entrance before we get into the zoo proper. Got the Cafe Carlos, which, I mean, wow, what is going on here? Look at all this. It's so intricate. His zoos are always full of amazing pieces, which you look at and think, I don't remember that. And it's because he's just made it himself. That clock is pretty wonderful. And look at the artwork as well. All custom made. Very cool. Let's check out the next part of the plaza. There's various shops and things like this around here. I've checked out um, a few places in this zoo but this is the first time I've been around it properly. So we'll see what else we have. What's this? Antiquitaten Curiositaten. Okay, Antiquities, Curiosities. Oh, that's really cool. <laughs> Statues. And look at the birds in the background. That's just amazing. A big crocodile up there. Owl. This guy's moustache is pretty impressive. Yeah, that's very cool. Let's see what we have on the other side of the plaza. That entrance there is very famous. That was the entrance to the Tier Park Hagenbeck. With the animals. And the big gates, we'll look at that in more detail in a second. So we go past this amazing fountain. Let's see what we have over here. I think these are the ticket booths. Just little animal drawings everywhere. I think Just Goron did those. There are some workshop items in this zoo. I don't have a complete list or anything, but when I recognize them, I'll let you know. These elephant heads. <laughs> That's brilliant. Let's head on in to the first habitat in the zoo. This is a really famous one. Um, probably a quick word about animal welfare before we go any further. This is based um, on zoos from the early 1900s. And this habitat here, wow, it's so cool is actually dates from 1896, I think. Um, so you're not gonna see a lot of animal welfare here, but you are gonna see some absolutely amazing designs. And this really changed what people thought a zoo could be possible, or what could be possible with a zoo when it, when it was uh, unleashed upon the world in Germany. And it was all designed like this with hidden moats. So look at all these <laughs> seals, penguins, polar bears and reindeer, all seemingly in one habitat. They can't get to each other. Uh, they're perfectly safe, although I would hesitate to call them perfectly happy. <laughs> um, but yeah, this blew people's minds when it, uh, when it first came out because animals were just kept in cages up until this point. Very, very small cages. A zoo would have been a horrific place to visit if you had uh, modern sensibilities. What, what an amazing piece of work by Drac to create this. I can't actually see the joins myself. 
but there's hidden moats, rock walls, etc. Just make sure that the animals can't get into each other's habitats other than the ones that are supposed to be sharing one. Like the seals and the penguins here. But yeah, that is a masterpiece. All the snow as well. Great piece of work. Right, where should we go next? I've got no idea where I'm going from this point. I've been flying around the zoo, saying wow a lot and um, <laughs> filming some cinematics, but I've not actually walked around it yet. Looks like there's a path down here. And we've got a big old building in the background there. And then some animals here. Look like um, pronghorns, I think. And yeah, this must be a North American display. Got some buffalo as well. Uh, I've done everything I can with... Oh, hello. <laughs> this is really cool. Little prairie dogs and beavers. Yeah, I've done everything I can with the frame rate in terms of this zoo. I've got rid of any extra animals I deemed unnecessary. There are no guests. I turned off climbing. Deleted any workshop items left lying about. This is this is as smooth as it's going to be. I think I'm going to try and turn off the smooth camera. That might actually make things a bit better. Movement's less smooth, but I feel like the frames are, are improved. We'll keep it like this from now on. Oh, wow, look at that. Big sort of gothic building in the background there. I don't know which way to go. Oh, a bridge. I like a bridge. Let's go up here. So what have we got? So we've got some red deer there. And then a castle. That looks like the Ibex habitat and the artists in the Netherlands. I suspect that's what that's uh, based on. Some more architecture. I love the different historical architectural styles here. We've got some Balinese looking architecture in the background there. We've got medieval European architecture in the foreground. And we've got this more naturalistic. Wow. Those are some big lads. And this is something that would have been enormously impressive uh, back in the late 1800s, early 1900s when this zoo first opened. The ability to see bears like this with no barriers between you and the bear, no bars. You can see we've got these rather nasty looking bars down here, the big ditch to keep them in. And this style became very popular. It was used throughout zoos across the world after this. London Zoo opened one in the early 20th century with a, a similar fake mountain and bears separated from the guests by uh, ditches rather than the um, bars that had been used previously. So let's wander down here, see what else we can see. There's a lot going on here. We've got deer over here. Here we go, as a sign. Uh, looked Hirschgarten. If only I spoke German, <laughs> I would be able to understand what that meant. Uh, oh, okay. We've got like a seabird display here with some of Drax's um, birds bird props I think he calls them which from a distance work really nicely oh look at the puffins up there that's really cool Got some more along here and then this very cool looking building here next to some oh a little Australian area wallabies and emu okay so we're back where we started really Let's take this path down here and see where this leads us. Nice old fashioned sort of Victorian looking aviary over there. And this little rotunda, I think it's called. Oh, just a nice little spot to uh, have a croissant. <laughs> what more could you want? A view of a outback area and a croissant. Oh wow, look at this. This is another famous building look at that hippo this i forget which zoo this is in um it's not a tear garden hagenbeck i think um might be another dutch zoo but yeah this egyptian temple I've seen a few people build this in planet zoo and it looks like it takes a lot of building All the decorations on there the flamingos that's really cool 
So this presumably is an African house. Hence the Egyptian theming. Look at those benches. Oh, that's great. Wow. I love making statues out of the in-game statues, but Drac takes it to another level. That is just amazing. What have we got in here? This looks like the indoor area for a, a larger outdoor habitat. Maybe the hippo one that we saw earlier. Yeah, with the... Uh, <laughs> look at the lettuce leaves. Yeah, presumably that's the indoor for the hippos. Ooh, hello. Who are you? Okay, we've got a... Uh, Scimitar Horned Oryx in here. Let's go outside and take a look at the hippo. Oh, that topiary is amazing. You do need to bring a Thesaurus to any attempt to make a video of one of Draxus so you can, uh, so you don't run out of words. Uh, I've forgotten mine, but I'll do my best. <laughs> that water looks uh, appetizing. This guy does not look like somebody you want to mess about with. Let's continue. Got some little aviaries here. With, oh wow, squirrel. I think that's a, uh, is it provost squirrel? Giant squirrel. That's really cool. I don't know how he makes those prop animals. It's pretty crazy. I've got a pretty hefty looking moose over here. You forget how huge moose are until you, uh, until you see them up close. There's another one over there. Um, might be more squirrels or something in here. Oh no, is that a, that's a parakeet by the looks of it. Uh, we've got some of the red river hogs over here. And an aardvark. Pretty sizable habitat for them. More crazy statues, like that flautist. Africa. Oh, this is the kind of thing there was a lot of in the zoos as well. These style of statues where gorillas are abducting women and lions are fighting tigers, all that kind of stuff you'd never see in a zoo these days. Oh, we've even got an aquarium here. Oh, wow. That is insane. How? I have no idea how he's done that. Look at the detail, the hair, the face. This is not a billboard. Um, you can probably see that, but if we get really up close, this is not a billboard. And these are just pieces. That really is amazing. This takes us around to another African exhibit here. Got some gems box, zebra. No standoff barriers here. Guests can probably guests could probably feed the animals. This zoo is set, um, according to Drac, in 1914. That is the that is the year that we happen to be walking around the zoo. Um, so yeah, they at guests would still definitely have been feeding animals back then. So no need to keep them away from them. Apart from the obvious. <laughs> this is another beautiful habitat. Look at the background there. This is one of my favorite things about Planet Zoo, the ability to virtually visit zoos like this. Obviously you wouldn't really want to go to one of these in real life because of the horrific uh, <laughs> animal welfare, but the zoos themselves are so beautiful and the um, the vision and the effect that they had on zoos now builds like this were very influential nowadays obviously zoos try to combine making it look like a natural environment with also making sure that the animals have all the space and the enrichment that they need um, but this was an important step to getting to the stage where we're at now you wouldn't have a you know san diego zoo or highland wildlife park or chester zoo without zoos like this existing first of all prior to this um yeah just rows of tiny little cages with uh, very sad animals cramped into them so this would have been less of a step up from the for the animals than it was for the guests but important nonetheless let's head on over here to this big structure 
guessing this is an aviary of some sort. Oh, I can see a cassowary already. Oh, it's like a theatre display for them. Wow. Again, more incredible... Ooh. Hello? More incredible uh, custom artwork. We need to go to that building at some point as well. But we'll see where this path takes us. Oh, this is enormous. I'm assuming this is based on the Palm House at Kew Gardens here in England. Um, but there were a few of these built around that uh, kind of time, so it might not be that one in particular. I'd have to ask Drac. Got some statues around here. I love this. We've got a sort of prehistoric display. Like a plesiosaur or something like that. Maybe some ichthyosaurs. That's really cool. Something else you would have seen back then. You can still see in Crystal Palace in London today. Wow, that's an entrance. Let's go through the curtain and see what's in here. Oh, it's a bat house. Look at these roots, what are they made from? What is that? Okay, I genuinely don't know what that... Oh, is that an upside down tree? So clever. I can see myself stealing that idea uh, very shortly for the African area in San Bernardino Zoo. And then we've got a Lima walkthrough. This is very cute. I wonder if they had walkthroughs back then. I'm assuming they did. Um, I thought they were a more modern invention, but I mean, there's nothing technically to stop you from doing a walkthrough in the late 1800s. I just wasn't aware that they'd done it, but that's really cool. Got more aviaries here with some pheasants. Yeah, let's continue around here and see what we find. Okay, next up is this beautiful little planted area, this rose archway, uh, a water feature here, a little seating area there, and this loops us back round close to where we started, I think. Let's take this path. Let's have a look. Yep, that's, uh, <laughs> that's a pretty sizable building, all right. Oh, has it got a huge water feature here? That really is beautiful. Another amazing statue here. Baron von Drac mit Liebling Gelovn. Ah, uh, I presume that means lion. <laughs> Just casually patting his lion's head. Nice to see Drac making an appearance in the video there. Let's go up to this enormous building. I'm not actually sure what building this is based on have to ask Drac for that. Maybe he'll let us know in the comments. We've got some more amazing statues here. This is what I was talking about. Bears attacking lions and snakes attacking crocodiles. Oh god, how does he do this stuff? Wow. Let's go into this building. I have flown into here um, when I was filming the cinematics and there is some amazing stuff in here. So first off, we've got this Titan Arum room. Intricate patterns all the way around the walls. More statues. Uh, lots of vending machines. I'm not sure what they're doing here in 1940. <laughs> uh, and then we move into a little reptilarium here. Oh, that's so cool. Loads of crocodiles. So close. And then we've got some iguanas and stuff down here. And then on the other side of the crocs, we've got some alligators. That is very cool. So that's one uh, sort of wing of the building. There's nothing in the other wing as of yet. We've got another beautiful building here to check out. Got some outdoor cages here. Ah, oh, for macaques. Let's see what's inside. Oh, 
is very impressive. All right, so inside we have ah oh, some custom little uh, marmosets, I think. Yeah, wow, the detail on this is just crazy. And then outside, we've got some mandrills in rather a sad looking little cage. What a view. There's another incredible aviary right next to that building with some more prop birds inside it. And that aviary leads us on to, and uh, you can probably hear them uh, display for wolves here, which is part of this really big North American area we caught a glimpse of earlier. There they are. Behind the walls we've got something interesting which is um, a set of habitats for different dog breeds which apparently is something they used to have in zoos back then. Um, so we've got some dingoes in here. I imagine they would have had, you know, German shepherds and all sorts of different types of dogs. Uh, in the middle here we have a thylacine which is there to demonstrate convergent evolution basically. Not actually a, uh, a dog of course, but very similar to a, uh, a very large dog due to its similar lifestyle. But time now to visit one of the coolest buildings in the zoo. I absolutely love this. I've been looking at shots of this from Drac on Discord for a while now. It is the Natural History Museum. Got an amazing skull up there. And then in here, this. It's so cool. Look at the roof. How does he do this? Giant family tree of life up there. And then all these dinosaurs. These were mostly made by um, Carlos, another amazing creator, uh, in collaboration with Drac. I think Drac gave him some info and he did most of the building. But yeah, it really is absolutely amazing. These spiral staircases as well. Yep, definitely one of my favourite things in the zoo. Let's move on. So how's this for a view? This is the uh, mixed Siamang and Flamingo habitat complete with a pirate ship. Because of course there's a pirate ship here. <laughs> Amazing. Got some slightly more modern looking aviaries in the background there as well. But we next are going to go to this incredible elephant house. I think this is from Berlin Zoo, if I am correct. Look at the size of it. But yeah, the work on this is just amazing. Might change the time of day, get a little more light on it. There we go, absolutely exquisite. I love that ruined temple away up in the uh, distance there. It's an absolutely incredible set of temples over here. I don't know if they're just for background or if it just wasn't completed. Drac builds everything on a laptop. I think his zoos often just get to the point where they're so intricate, powerful as his laptop is, it can't handle it anymore. And uh, he just has to stop. Wow, that is quite a tiger habitat. is really cool. Oh, it looks like we've got all the big cats in here. I've got no idea what zoo this is based on. It's a very cool bit of architecture. I'm not sure where from. Look at this, I just found some chickens. <laughs> there are some incredible views in this zoo, look at that. This zoo's so big it's impossible to show you all of it, but I hope I've given you a, a flavour of what to expect in here. It is on the workshop. Um, you need a pretty beefy PC to run it, but if you can, it is definitely worth it. Absolutely amazing work, as always, from Drac. I'm going to leave you here. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again next week for some more Planet Zoo. Until then, bye.